Brother Scott. If you all would come around here, we'll pray around these boxes. And that the church has done a great job again. God bless you for that. This is going all over the globe. If all the deacons could come up around the box here, we are going to pray. What a blessing. Amen. Help part of that. Thank you, son. Amen. Would you like to say the prayer, Doc? Amen. Thank you, Jonathan. Let's pray that the Lord will bless the gift, the generosity of God's people here at Falls Creek Baptist Church. And, um, and pray that the hearts will be touched. By these, all shall know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And our expression of love to these children, we pray that God will use some way, somehow, for them to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray, and then, Brother Steve, you, you, you do the prayer afterwards. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to send this box out as an expression of our love to you, first of all, and our love and care for those children. You know each one of them that we receive them. We do pray that the Word of God will touch their hearts and that they will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, which is... The reason, not only for the season, but for us to live. Oh God, we plead the blood over this box and we pray that the work of the Lord will do a great job in the lives of those that will be touched by it. We continue to pray for our pastor, bless him even today, and help his family as well. Thank you so much for everything you have done. And thank for each one that was able to take a part in this offering. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. We have a special music, right, Miss Sharon? And then, just before the message, I have a good friend of mine that's here today. And uh, since he sings better than I, he will help my wife in a, in a song. to sleep there's food on my table and shoes on my feet you gave me your love lord and a fine family thank you lord for your blessing As the world looks upon me, as I struggle along, they say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart I'm rejoicing 
I'll be in Psalm 100. Psalm 100. And we read until Psalm 119. Amen? No. Just Psalm 100. Face above. 
No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else would take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Psalm 100. Thanksgiving. What a, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, it's good. Uh, Psalm 100, okay? It's just after Psalm 99, just before Psalm 101. Okay, good. He's there. He said he's there. Hallelujah. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands. Now notice, serve the Lord with gladness. I mean, if I will make his joyful noise, would be good. If I would get our white handkerchief, remember those days back yesterday, you know, last century, last millennium, how they would do on the camp meeting trails, you know, they have the handkerchief there and all. I mean, that, that's nice, the noise. But the Lord goes on to tell you and I, we ought to serve Him. Serve Him with gladness. And then He tells us, come before His presence with singing. Don't come with complaining. Don't come, you know, uh, criticizing. Everything will be all right. Why? Notice verse 3, no. E, that the Lord, he is what? God. Man, that would make a Methodist to shout. I mean, no E, that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people. And the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. For the Lord, not only he is God. But the Lord he is also what? Good. Amen. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Let us pray. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to be at your house. We thank you, Lord, for the blessed word. We thank you for the living word, Jesus Christ, and we thank you for the salvation that came to each one that believed. In the sacrifice that was done at Calvary. We thank you Lord for the opportunity that we set aside to adore you. To praise you. To express our gratitude for all the things that you have done. I do pray for Fall Creek Baptist Church. For Pastor Bob. And for the ministry here. That you continue to bless your word. And let the word of God go forth. For the glory of God. Bless us this day Lord. And help each one of us to do our part to glorify your name. I need your help. I need your anointment. I need your power. I plead the blood of the service this morning. Let us see your glory. Let us praise your name. Let us exalt your name. And everything that will be said and done will glorify your name. That's the desire of our heart. Forgive our sins and, uh, uh, and let us, Lord, to your perfect and great will. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen.
We are about what your country, among all the nations in the globe, maybe two others, would step aside and stop what they're doing to do that, which is called Thanksgiving. I'm so glad that Thanksgiving, notice, is not a Christian holiday. It's a Christian way of living. Yes, we step aside, we stop and, and, and grill or cook or fry the turkey, and we'll have a great family, family reunion on Thursday. But every day of our lives, we ought to live with expression of gratitude and appreciation for what the Lord has done for us. And if there's a church that I have been to in all these years that can be thankful to the Lord, this church is Fall Creek. You have been blessed. And God has been good to you. In the bad times, if we will, in the good times. I have been here in situations that we as a church, we got together to help a brother that was in time of a need. And I saw how you pulled together. I have been here when we were doing a vacation Bible school trying to help some little babies that we did not know if they would make or not. And our hearts were ache at that time. And the last time that I came for another VBS, I saw what a great looking babies they are. I even took a picture with me. We have been blessed. Yes, Pastor Bob, for a long time, on the front line, with a big target on his back, is better a disease. And more than once, we have seen how the Lord has come and rescued him and turned things around. I walked to that man's room yesterday. I, I did go with Pop. And as we got there, we bumped with another man that was coming in. And so, you know how he is, Pastor Bob. I call him Dr. Bob. There, there, there's a saying there on the room. Name that he likes to be called, Pastor Bob. I call him Dr. Bob. So they need to change that saying. They need to call him Doctor. Give the man the respect that he deserves. Amen? So... Uh, uh, as I got in, and he was so pleased, smiling, did not let me touch his hand because he has blisters. He said, oh, no, no, this is nasty. He's always thinking of others. Always, always. Uh, that's the reason I, I, I believe he's their pastor because he's still pastoring. Thinking of others. And then a, 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 as I spent my time there with him and he was telling who am I and what a great relationship we have with Fall Creek Baptist Church, our last partner, and uh, what a joy, what a blessing it is to Anne and I and our children to have you holding us and helping us and blessing us the way you have done through the years. And then he told about Pop, how he was his former pastor, and then he introduced to us John, what a friend he is, one of his best customers. I mean, pastor on the side, he's the man for Maytag, Maytag. Don't, don't, don't forget about that. So, and then we, 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 we stay around and talking about the goodness of the Lord. And Pastor Bob stopped, looked to John, and told John, said, John, I want you to pray about something. Next year when I take a team to Cape Verde, I want you to pray about going there with us to help Louis. I said, wow. This is a man that the doctors keep scratching their head and look to the clock and see how much overtime he's doing according to their account. Amen. This is a man that doesn't put the guard down. He's so thankful to the Lord. He's making noise, but he's doing exactly what the verse says, serving. Folks, yes, we ought to remember the great things the Lord has done for us. We need to praise His name. We need to bless His name. We need to do all of that. But until we have the last breath, we ought to keep on serving. Wow. 
serving the Lord with a grateful heart. I tell you, when Miss Janet was singing, she said, these clothes are not new. I thought with myself, said myself, it is true. But I'm, I'm wearing the best that I ever wear before. This, this thing has four buttons. Anna came to me and said, uh, you need to close out, to, to button out. I'm not used to do these four things, you know. Uh, uh, Brother Eric, I, I am from the times that you, all you have was two. And then I remember when it became three. Yes, you are right. You need to close the four. I, I closed three. I thought I was doing fine. There's one more button here. I'm wearing the best clothes that I ever wear in my whole life. These shoes are not new, but they are made in America. It's not Pastor Bob. Don't, don't you worry. <laughs> I, I already wear that last time. This is Alan Andemond's. That's a pretty expensive shoes for a missionary to wear, you know. Made in America. I go to this missionary closet all over the country. As I step there, I, I, it, it gets to my eyes. There is a pair of shoes there waiting on me. I even don't try them out. I already know it's my size. I know because the Bible says how beautiful are the feet of those that proclaim the gospel. And I'm always wearing a beautiful shoes. Folks, what I'm telling you today, we don't have such stories. Yes, I remember when my brother would run to school without shoes. I remember those days that my daddy fell sick. And Brother Powers, you and all the men know here, we, we all know that mama takes care of everybody. But if there's someone in the house that cannot afford to be sick, it's daddy. Come next day, he ought to be working. And uh, in a family of 10 children, just eight alive, I remember like if we were today, my daddy falling sick. Taken to the hospital. The truck stopped there by the sidewalk. We did not know who would take the truck to the delivery that needs to be done. I remember like if we were today. And I remember how the Lord came through to rescue us. And out of a tragedy, he made a triumph. I remember how my daddy was on the wheel, wheelchair for a, a, a little while. He could not even walk. And then he come out of that couch and trying to get on the truck and start to start in the truck and start to driving. When he could not even do that. I remember. We trying to quench him down and trying to calm him down and say everything would be all right. Folks, if you look back on memory land, all of us, we have such a story. But you know what has made the difference in my family? The same that can make the difference on any family. Is that the Lord, He is God. In another text, He tells us, Be still and know that I am. As we celebrate the thanks, this Thanksgiving season, as we make a, such a joyful noise unto the Lord, I want each one of us that is here this morning to realize that God has allowed us to live, to have eternal life through Jesus Christ alone. Yes, it's not through the religion. It is a relationship. If you are here, and you struggle, and you suffer with things of life. If you have not been born again, the worst is yet to come. Because God has a point to wants to men to die, and after that, judgment. So don't make any mistake. This, really, if you don't have the Lord as your Lord and Savior, is the best that life can offer. Because after that comes judgment, comes punishment. But God doesn't want that for you. He loves you. 
That's the reason Jesus came to die. Die for you. If you were the only person living, Jesus would die for you. To forgive you of your sins. All you need to do is to believe. To ask Him to forgive you of your sins. To come to your heart and save your soul. Then you will come to the realization, to the understanding that the Lord, He is God. And notice... It is he that had made us. That's a blessing. And not we ourselves. That's the difference between my God and the other gods. My God made me. The other gods are man handmade. That's a huge difference. What kind of God you have in your life? Could be possible your career, your dreams, your wealth, your passions. Well, they will not last forever. The Bible tells us there is pleasure in sin for a season. So, a life of gratitude, of thankfulness is more than a season. It is because of a new life that we have in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. I want you to understand, as the Bible tells us, that know ye that the Lord is God, is he that had made us and not we of ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And this church, more than ever, it's come to this realization. Yes, we praise the Lord for the man of God that he has allowed come our way, that has taught us faithfully by his preaching and by his personal example. That's a blessing. I mean, may I be honest with you? I don't get anything to lie. In spite of all the suffering, that Dr. Bob is going through. I yield to God. That he will count me worthy. Of the same suffering. I rather that. Than be put on the aesthetics. Of someone that fell by the wayside. That fell by the trap of money. Of woman. Of immorality. I'd rather that. John, you, you know your daddy better than I. You know the great legacy that you all have. You know how hard the way he has been through it all. To defend Christian education. All the things that his man has gone through. And has remained faithful. I don't know about you. I read that, Anna, Joseph Neal, and Arthur, and Anna Laura, and Jonathan. Then someone call you and say, you know what? Your daddy, your husband, was doing what he was not supposed to do, was where he was not supposed to be, and this happened to him. Oh, no. Oh, no. I want to be a faithful sheep of the Lord. And folks, each one of us, we ought to have the same desire. We ought to have the same will that as his flock we will remain faithful and we will do what the Lord will will have for us to do. And then there is a call, a very important call on verse 4.